Hello everybody, it's Chibi, and today I'm here to bring you a Shingeki no Bahamut anime review. Now, this week's episode. Wow, a lot of bombshells, a lot of reveals, and a lot of things being set up with this episode of Shingeki no Bahamut. I mean, a lot. We got a lot of things explained, a lot more questions pop up, a lot of answers just answered in this episode. Just so much stuff going on in this episode. I mean, there is a lot of content to cover. So, the first thing I want to talk about is we find out kind of what sort of the demon's in-game goal is. Their goal is to free Satan from the god, like, demon key, not the god key, I was actually going to say that. But they want to free Satan from the demon key that is currently imprisoning Bahamut. So, that is really interesting. That is Lucifer's goal after we found out in this episode. So, the big question that pops up with this episode is, what is uh, Beelzebub's overall goal? Because in this episode, we find out that Azazel is still alive. As I predicted in my last review, I said that the final scene with Azazel looked like he teleported and he got away. Well, with this episode, it seems like Azazel just got wrecked. Like, even further, he got killed by Beelzebub because... He wants to do something on the forms of Judgment Day. We don't know exactly what he's trying to accomplish, but clearly his plans are like almost probably the opposite of what Lucifer wants to do. So if I had to say, most likely judging by the way the plot was set up with the demons, how he found out they wanted to save Satan, and they actually wanted to free him from the demon key, I want to probably say that maybe Beelzebub wants to either get in the power of Lucifer, get the new throne, or he like wants to be the new lord, or he might want to actually probably control Bahamut. That, that might be the overall reason what he's trying to do now the other things with this episode we have other little setups going on in this episode especially with this mysterious dude at the beginning of the episode like right at the beginning of the episode you see Amira have her little flashback and you see how she starts to like look at Bahamut she sees Bahamut she sees a link and when she says that she was once in a cocoon and we see this mysterious dude so I want to play a little bit of fury crafting real quick the dude that was shown at the beginning of this episode in the flashback with Amida when she was like a little baby in a cocoon, pretty much I'm willing to bet that dude is the dude that was in the robe that poisoned the king or did something to the king in this episode because you see the bottom face of the dude that had a robe on him and was in there with the king that put that stuff in his water or whatever. I'm willing to bet that dude was the same dude we saw in Amida's flashback. I'm willing to bet because the facial structure on the bottom, what we got to see of his mouth, looked really similar. Now, the thing I will say about this episode that really just got me was the overall art quality. Oh my god. I, I, I'm just gonna say right now, damn, on that Lucifer art quality. Did you see that fucking Lucifer still frame, dude? It just, oh my god. Dude, that's thumbnail. That's fucking thumbnail. That is straight out thumbnail. And that is wallpaper material. That thumbnail or that picture is wallpaper material. That looks amazing. It looks absolutely fucking amazing in this episode. The art quality in some of these scenes, like Beelzebub's art quality, dude, I, I, oh, man, I'm loving that design. I'm loving that fucking design. I'm really loving Beelzebub's design in this episode. Lucifer's design, woo! And then we find out a couple other things. We find out that technically Lucifer and Satan are two separate beings. It's kind of obvious, I've already been told, but I mean, I just wanted to mention this if no one really realized. But, you know, technically, now that we know this entire information, Lucifer and Satan are two different beings. I'm guessing Lucifer might be the son of Satan. I'm willing to bet that's probably where it's going. But anyways, moving on to other points of this episode. Kaiser and Favreau get knighted. Wow. I just thought, uh, wow, that, that's really good. That's a massive accomplishment for Kaiser and Favreau because, I mean, as we know what happened to Favreau and Kaiser, their families were pretty much destroyed by demon kind. They were ruined, and they had their spat because of, you know, their families being pinned up against each other. Stuff like that, how, you know, Kaiser lost his entire family. Well, with this episode, finding out that they've now been knighted and they now have their, you know, like honor and pride now besides what they used to have it really makes me feel a lot better for kaiser's character but i wonder exactly what kaiser's going to do now because it makes me question his importance to the series let me explain why now as we see at the end of this episode you know you have amida and you have favreau i'm guessing rita might join them They're going to go to find the Val valley of demons or the Va uh, yeah i think it's the valley of demons that's exactly what it's called they're trying to find amida's mother that's an angel and we see Favreau and Amida ride off. Okay. But Kaiser's in the middle of the town just, you know, 
doing his own thing, you know, night work for the town. So I wonder if he's going to have any more importance with the story progression, or are we going to just see his perspective with the Orly Knights? Is that what's going to happen here? Because with him not joining, you know, Amida and Favreau, it makes me wonder what role he's going to play. I mean, judging by the way the ending was done, though, it seems like he knew that Rito was fooling everybody with that, you know, skeleton-type dragon thing. So maybe he might key in on this and he might follow Favreau and Amida. That, that, that's a possibility with Rita. He could probably do that. Now, other things, too. Animation quality. Oh, 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 dude, 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 dude. Fuck animation, man. Okay, it, may, it might not be at that fate, stay not level, but damn, that animation is amazing. It is straight out fucking amazing quality. I am a fan of that animation and that art. I, I, I can't lie about that. That animation and art looks crazy. It really does in this episode, and I love the colors. Oh my god, the color palette. I, I can't express it enough to all of you. The color palette of these characters looks amazing. Like I said, Lucifer's uh, color palette, his character design, that's top. That's top shit right there. So, overall, episode sets up the next journey, going to the De uh, Valley of the Demons to find Amida's mother with this compass, with these two pendants. Favro's joining. And we have the entire bit with Kaiser and Favro being knighted. Most likely, Rita and Kaiser are going to follow after them. We also got a lot of setup going on with the king most likely going to kill Janna. So, I mean, it's possible. Overall, tell me your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Shingeki no Bahamut. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? What was your favorite moments about it? I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.